Hi, so this is the video of Hatshepsut's Red Chapel at Karnak. Now, I'm quite uh, nostalgic about this uh, chapel. First came across it on one of my first trips to Egypt in 1985. Then it was just laid out of rows of blocks of stone in the open air chapel. It wasn't until 1997 that the chapel was reconstructed and it took around about four years to do that, to reconstruct it into what it actually is, which is a bark um, chapel uh, originally intended for the bark of Amun-Ra. The lower uh, courses are made out of black dolerite and the red quartzite blocks make up the rest of it with the dado. The gift bearers remember that if you have pictures and writing it becomes magical are there forever so they are the gift bearers that are going to be bringing gifts to Amun Ra forever and ever. The titles of Hatshepsut is the perfect god lord of two lands Hatshepsut also former, foremost of noble ladies is is what her name actually means and you can see her wearing the blue war crown well that's how it's described the war crown because when kings of egypt had pictures of themselves on chariots they always wore that crown Egyptologists called it the war crown uh, maybe it was just a very light day-to-day -day crown that they wore there's a records of the gnomes on this red chapel so you can see evidence of all the gnomes, 22 for Upper Egypt and 22 for Lower Egypt. The offering bearers are bringing offerings for the Feast of Opet, which happens in August. So August is uh, a real hot time of the year and uh, just below the offering bearers are the palace facade of the Palace of Hatshepsut. And you can see Hatshepsut wearing the white crown in this picture. So the Red Chapel was located in the Holy of Holies. The back part of it is the Holy of Holies and the front part of it is where the wooden bark would have been placed. And remember the wooden bark contains the statue of the deity and it's um, carried around the open courts and it stops and makes prophecies for the rich Egyptians who are willing to pay for that sort of information. So remember what would happen at the beginning of the day in these deity temples. Well, the high priest with his assistant would open the wooden doors. Inside on the floor was sand, so they checked there were no footprints, that no one had been into that wooden bark shrine. On top of a pedestal would have been another wooden box and inside would be the statue of the deity. Now, the high priest um, would pick up the statue and put it on another pedestal outside of the uh, bark shrine. And then, depending on their level of, uh, of rich riches within the deity temple, music could be played, dancing could be uh, performed, uh, the statue was enticed with burning incense and uh, food offerings and water and that sort of thing. And what they wanted was the spirit of the god to go inside the statue so they could speak to them. So Egyptians believed in a form of shamanism. The gods were the stars at night and during the daytime they came back to earth as spirits and they lived inside these deity temples. So if you had a statue of the deity, the deity's uh, spirit could go inside the statue and communicate with the living. That's what the Egyptians believed. And that's what was happening in these two sections of this uh, bark shrine. The back part had the statue in its wooden shrine on the pedal stool. And the front part of it had another uh, block of stone uh, with the bark sitting on top. So it's very simple for the high priest and his assistant to bring it out and put it straight into the bark shrine on the uh, 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 the wooden canopy on the bark shrine, all ready to go.
Okay, so that's the purpose of it. The magical text is about the Opet festival in August. So remember, Amun Ra was originally a chaotic element. He became the king of the gods and a form of Ra during the uh, Middle Kingdom 12th dynasty. But he didn't have the equipment to seed the land. So that's why another form of him, a form of Amun Min or Amun Kemet, was created down at Luxor Temple because he had the kit, he had the phallus. So that's the whole purpose of the Feast of Opeth. So the bark of Amun Ra, you can see, is making its journey off to Luxor Temple. You've got the bark doing the overland journey and the earlier clip was uh, on the water. So the overland journey was the processional way from the south gate of Karnak, which joined to a T-junction, which was the precinct of the goddess Mut, and she would join the procession. Uh, Amun Ra would leave Karnak with his son Konsu. They would meet uh, his mother down at the T-junction. They carried on down to Luxor Temple for this Opet festival. You can see Hatshepsut is making offerings to Amun Ra in this clip. And the fan bearers, well, you remember it's 42 degrees in the shade in August. So you need lots of fan bearers for all these important dignitaries. And then you have the records, the magical records, which will last for eternity. The libations are being given by Hatshepsut to Amun Ra. And the base, the black base, the choice of the colour black, that uh, uh, black colour there represents uh, Kemet, the black lands, the black saw, the magical colour that gave them life. Without that flood and black mud coming every year from Ethiopia, you wouldn't have had wheat and barley, you wouldn't have had life, you wouldn't have had an Egyptian civilization. So that colour black was a magical colour, represented life. So I've mentioned the chapel and the function, the two rooms. Um, so it was located at this part of the temple that you can see on the map. So this is the large map. And then this is the segment where the chapel would have been. Um, the Queen, as I mentioned in the earlier video, had two suites uh, built very close to it with pictures, magical pictures of herself and text. Note the floor and the channel there. That channel is for sacrificing live animals uh, in front of the bark before it makes its journey. The spilling of blood was very magical to the ancient Egyptians just like in most cultures. Here we can see Hatshepsut as the high priest of Amun-Ra. Her duties are going to be performed in her absence because of this magical picture. Here we can see the other form of Amun-Ra, the one down at uh, Luxor, and you can see he's, uh, he's got the equipment of Min. He's got that big phallus ready to see the land. Now in this clip, you can see Hatshepsut in her post of the Hepsed. Now the Hepsed was the um, the coronation festival when a king became king of Egypt. And then every 20, 22 years, they um, reenacted that uh, Hepsed festival. And it was supposed to rejuvenate the king's spirit to rule the country well. So in this pose, you can see Hatshepsut is in the pose of the Hepsed, but what she's doing is rejuvenating the Opet festival in her absence. So even when she dies, this magical picture will rejuvenate this Opet festival. Very powerful, powerful magical picture. So the context here is about the rejuvenation of the ritual rather than her spirit. And it's forever. Uh, and it's interesting her uh, throne name is Mart Ka Ra, the stability of the soul of Ra, which gives balance throughout the country. It's so beautiful, the way that they use words is such a romantic uh, setting. The bark of Ra, Amun Ra and the bearers, there they are. That's their job, is to bring it out every day, 
go around that open court, making the prophecies, and then on the special OPEC festival, either go by river, then go over land. Okay, and then you have the other form of Amun, the Amun Min, the, uh, the seed of the land, the seed of the land for the new crops to come. Wow. That's why I love the ancient Egyptians so much. It's so romantic. I'm such a sucker. Anyway, um, my intention is to go back to uh, the Open Air Museum at Karnak sometime in the future and make a video tour of it and explain the pictures in more detail. A video tour which you could download onto your phone. To do that, I need funds. So I'd like you to consider looking at the information on the... Um, on the card to follow maybe go to gofundme which is my uh, fundraising page and make a small donation of a pound that'd be great thank you so much bye for now see you soon